the Captain's Quarter Show, hosted by yours truly, L. Milliner, the Captain. Let me bring in my guest. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you, Ed? I'm doing well. Again, thank you so much for hopping aboard with me. Um, if you would, go ahead and introduce yourself to those who do not know you and reintroduce yourself to those who do know you. Sure. Greg Albritton, state senator for Southwest Alabama, covers Washington and uh, Scambia and Mobile and uh, Baldwin counties. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now, give me a little bit of background. Uh, so how long have you been in politics and what positions have you held previously? Well, I've been in the House of Representatives long ago from 02 to 06 um, and then went out um, and came back in 14 to the Senate uh, and have been in the Senate since. Um, I'm serving now as chairman of the general fund in the Senate. Okay. All right. Um, now, running for the current seat that you're running for. Yeah, what district, is district two, a congressional seat? Yep. Right. So, so what, 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 what would be your role? How would your role be different from the, your current role right now? <laughs> uh, interesting. Uh, I'd be moving from a body that's uh, one of uh, 35 members to one in 435 members. Uh, that's almost a step down, it sounds like. But in the general fund of the state, uh, most of our money, uh, we handle something like $3.1 billion in the general fund every year. That's state money. But we actually spend somewhere close to $22 billion. That's because of all the federal money that comes in. Uh, so the state is totally dependent on federal money, federal largesse, if you will. And um, since that's the ultimate aspect of where the money comes from and how the best place to be is in Washington to control that money coming down, that's what I want to do. Okay. Now, I know a, a, a big thing right now is I've been seeing the, the whole gambling bill. That, that's, they're trying to push that again. I, I know previously it was more of just the lottery and it, and it fell through. This was a few, few years back. But now they're trying to bring a more comprehensive gambling, gambling bill. And I understand that you are instrumental in that. Can you explain that a little bit for us? I'd like to be instrumental in something like that, I tell you. Uh, but whether I am or not, that's another matter. Uh, look, the, the state of Alabama has gambling going on right now. We have uh, a number of uh, casinos, which really they're not casinos. They're one-armed bandit uh, places, Okay. They're electronic bingo machines, which has bingo on it, but you pull the uh, lever, bells and whistles go off, and they take your money. But anyway, we've got several of those, not just with uh, the Indian tribes on their land, but we also have, uh, I've heard reports that these things exist in all 67 counties. It's just a matter of how many machines is, are in each one. We've got sports gaming going on. We've got uh, uh, online gaming going on. We've got uh, uh, more casinos types being built. And all of this has no control by the state at all. We have no taxation by the state at all. We have no regulation by the state at all. It's the Wild West in Alabama. Everybody goes uh, outside to, to, to another state to buy the lottery tickets. Everybody does their gambling online or in one of these casinos. Everybody goes to the sports uh, places to do the betting on sports. It's all over us. And yet we continue to let that grow without any control or without any benefit. That's what this game and bill does. It captures where we are. It uh, controls it. It, it stops the, the uh, proliferation with the unregulation and we benefit from it. Okay. All right. Now, did you Hill's, catch all that? Did you catch all that, Captain? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if if this bill goes through, the current one right now, yes, sir. What what would that what, what would that mean for the for the voters of Alabama or the people of Alabama? Would we vote for it, or yes, or is this would. something that if it's passed, it gets passed, it, it becomes law? No, no, we don't have that that authority to do so. Uh, it, it would have to go to the locals for everybody statewide. 
to vote on whether to accept this plan or not. But before the folks can vote for it, the legislature, House and Senate, have got to agree on what the boundaries are going to be so that the people can vote on whether that's acceptable or not. Okay. And what what would be the main purpose of the bill? Like so so I you know I understand this to for tax dollars and, and creates revenue. No, not but, but where, dollars, where would the money go to specifically? First off, the tax dollars is a byproduct. The main thing that we're trying to do here is is get control of this industry in Alabama. Uh, we we're trying to find right now we're, we had a, a $35 million investment, another bingo parlor, if you will, that's one on bandits. It's just got built with no regulation control or license. Okay. At least on the state level. So those will continue to grow. Those will continue to spring up, not to mention all, all those that are in the back places. <clears throat> Alabama's got to take control of this industry. Alabama's got to control its growth if it's going to grow or stop its growth, whichever one we can work through and get. And then we also have got to be able to control all the online gaming, all the sports gaming within IL out there. Sports gaming has taken off huge. And, and we had two, I've heard a report that $2.5 billion of bets on the last Super Bowl in Alabama were made. All those were illegal. And yet there's no control over it. We've got to get control of this um, industry. That's what this is mostly about. Yes, there will be revenue somewhere around uh, um, seven to nine hundred million dollars every year coming in from taxation and regulation and license fees. Uh, but that's a byproduct from what we're trying to accomplish. OK. All right. Um, now, let me uh, kind of segue into another topic here. But before I get to that topic, I want to ask you a couple of questions about you personally. Um, so are you a man of faith, um, Christianity, or anything otherwise? <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I would like to think and hope so I am. Uh, I do attend church. I'm involved in church. I, uh, I raise my kids in church. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. I try to be every day. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, when you are in your in your role, wh whatever role you are in politics at the at the at the time, how much does your faith guide you in, you know, the 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 job that you have before you? Every day, every day, and and uh, every day, uh, uh, I, I seek guidance. Um, to, to for any decision and all decisions, uh, and try to follow the pattern that that the Holy Spirit guides. All right, good deal, good deal. Now I saw that you kind of kind of is to me it's ridiculous that this is even something that people will kind of harp on, but I saw that you were. In support of a bill that made abortion uh, illegal at any point in pregnancy, is that is that am I correct on that? I think what you're talking about is the bill we passed. I think it was last year, year or so ago, which had to deal with the definition of when life begins, and that was the definition was uh, at uh, conception. Yes. Okay. Um, so to, just to be clear about that bill, personally, I completely, I, I'm a person who's pro-life 100%. So I don't believe that there's any point where we should choose to, you know, take the life of the child. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the child is the, the only innocent party in the whole situation because they the child didn't ask to be conceived. So um so on that on that vein with with, with so that does that bill uh protect the, the, the life under all circumstances? Well it defines life as um at conception. So what that does as I understand it is that places the um responsibility 
as to when you're going to do, if it's an abortion or some other matter, that, that, that you're dealing with a life at that point. That's, that's now part of this gets into, and you've probably seen in the recent um, uh, Alabama Supreme Court decision that said because of this bill, uh, that's got and has effect on uh, in vitro fertilization and the ramifications that have come about because of that. We've got a bill. <clears throat> we've got a bill now coming up to, to try to clarify that um, because I think where we're headed here is a clarification so that life is conception and within a growth period. I guess that means it's going to be somewhere. And I, I haven't seen the bill. I'm just speculating. But I suspect that we're going to have this so that the embryo is embedded in the uterine wall where it can grow. If it's growing, it's life. If it's not growing, it isn't, I guess. I don't know. But we're trying to find a clarification along that line. Yeah, that gets very, the, the whole IVF idea, That does, to me, that to me, it's very weird. It's, it's just, um, I don't know. It, it's almost like we as humans are trying to insert ourselves or our, you know, our mentality or, you know, our creativity into creating life. And it's like, I, it just gets weird to me. Um, you mean, I, you I guess mean I'm just the, more of an old school, look, a man, one man, one woman. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it, it may not be, you know, be meant to be. Oh. Well, are you are you suggesting here, Captain, that maybe uh, uh, man is trying to supersede or supplant God? That's what it seems to be. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? It would, and it won't be the last, unfortunately. No, exactly. <laughs> um, and you're right. So I agree with you. I agree with you. That 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 whenever you start delving into those matters and carrying things forward, you can develop all kinds of scenarios that become uh, troublesome. Right, right, right. We, we, we tend to, where there isn't an issue, we tend to try to fix the issue and we <laughs> end up creating worse issues. Uh, it's just, you know, right. anyway. Um, yep. Every so time I want to talk about problem, something else. Um, new ones, right? I, I, I have spoken to another uh, uh, senator recently, and I'm hoping to have more on as well. And I'm going to ask every last one of you guys and ladies this question. When it comes to crime, all right, in the state of Alabama, all right, I, I live in Montgomery, all right, I'm, I'm not born here, but I was raised here from age five up to high school, and I've, and I've been here since, since I left college. Um, I have watched my city just get, you know, get worse and worse and worse when it comes to crime. and it seems that part of the issue is a lack of punishment or a lack of whatever you want to call it, uh, confinement for those who are violent. Now, what role do you play in as far as making laws for the judge to be able to, to hand down the appropriate, you know, bail or bond or no bond or sentencing? What is your role in that arena? Uh, pretty significant uh, jurisdictional a uh, aspects of uh, the courts are within the hands of the legislature. We define those jurisdictional boundaries and uh, we set particular things uh, along that. And most often we give judges a, a very great amount of, as they call it, discretion on how they can within ranges of, of accomplishing those things. But that's just one part of the problem, though, if I might. Uh, someone commits a crime, they go to a trial, they get convicted, and then they get sentenced. Then what? Where do you go? That's part of our problem in Alabama. We have no place to send them. We have no place to keep them. Uh, have you been to a prison lately and seen that? Uh, we're having to shut prisons down because we they don't work. They're unsafe. They, the toilets don't flush. The locks don't work. Uh, is in great big, huge dormitories. The guards can't go in there without threat of their life. These are bad places. Uh, we are on a pattern now of trying to remedy that. 
We have a, a prison, a brand new prison being built in Elmore County. We have plans for another down in Escambia County. That will not be new beds. Those will be replacement beds and put more controls and such on. That's going to be expensive and uh, no one wants to pay for it. Prisons are not a, a, a good thing. You can't sell that to the public. But if you can't have a place to put the people that need to be put away, where are they going to wind up? On the street and in your bedroom and in your house. We've got to get new prisons in so that we can house these people, control them, and keep them safe, along with folks that work there. So, yeah, we've, we're highly involved with that, and I think we're making some progress. Okay. Um, so when it comes to— More than to, you wanted to know, right? Go ahead. I said that was more than you wanted to know, right? No, I, I want to know it all. I want to know it all. Because <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, I do agree with you. I agree that this is— it, it, When we often look at crime as an issue, we don't look at the full scope of what creates crime and why it continues to happen. And, you know, uh, the, the it, it seems to be the same criminals over and over and over. And we, we, like, we, we wonder what's going on. But— like you said, I agree. The there's overcrowding in the prisons. Um, now, personally, I don't necessarily care a whole lot about their comfort and whatnot. But I do get what you said about they're living in dormitory type style, and it makes it unsafe for the COs to go in if there's an issue, or maybe just do their checks or whatnot. I do understand that portion of it. Um, so you wait till you get you go you go visit one of these, Captain, and you go inside one of these places unarmed, alone, and you'll see and feel what the problem is. That is a major issue. Uh, uh, I, my sister used to work at one of those, and at one point during a riot, they were breaking the door down to get into her cubicle where she was locked in to get into her. Those are conditions that we cannot tolerate for anybody that's employed by the state. And the, the, the difficulties that we have in putting the Tiger teams in there to put the right down, to get them separated, we have no places to put them. All we do is shovel them back into the 100-man dormitory. Um, we've got to do things better, not to, for comfort, not for uh, uh, specialized uh, housing that, that's comfortable. No but so that we can keep them safe and keep them controlled. And so that when the CEO goes into work, he feels comfortable that he'll be able to go home and not in a body bag. That's what we got to deal with. Right. Now, now when it comes to the, 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 those that are, now I know you said earlier, you mentioned that the judges are given discretion. Okay. Yep. Now what's the balance on that? Because, I, I'm seeing personally where judges are given You froze up, Captain. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I got you. Okay. Yeah. You saw so, personally where judges have given what? Yeah, so uh, so so I've seen judges that are giving bond to attempted murderers, um, you know, to, to other violent violent offenses, and oftentimes, uh, just in Montgomery, I mean, we have, we've had two or three guys just here recently go to get locked up for attempted murder or get locked up for a robbery, get out, bond out, and then they end up killing someone. So uh, so what's the balance on the discretion? Like it, it just seems to the be. Balance. An issue here. If I might, if I might, the balance is elections. All of our state judges are elected positions. And if that judge, if a judge is doing that to that community, that community can diselect them just like they diselect me. That can happen. That's the check. So um, the legislature coming in and doing more controls on that, like you said with any other, you fix one problem, you create two. The biggest control that we have on what you're discussing is put good conservative judges in place that understand how to use discretion and how to protect the public. Okay. That was a, yeah, that's absolutely right. 
I think a lot of people don't understand that part. They don't get they don't. that these judges are, we, we vote for these circuit court judges. We, we vote, the people who are seeing these cases, we're putting them into, into their seat. So, uh, exactly. yeah, I'm glad you said that right there. Um, uh, let's see here. What else do I got? So, um, oh, so family. All right. Me, I am a person who's looking for maybe a bill, a law, w whatever that looks like. But I, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for some senator or anyone to push a bill where it's an incentive for families, a man and a woman, to come together, get married, raise their family. Because the number one deterrent of crime of you know a uh, high school dropout that type of thing is having a mom and a dad you know like all the stats prove this so i'm wondering why we don't see some type of incentives where we're, we're trying to keep families together because the government has had no issue in the past and continues to do it where they they, they incentivize single parent uh, homes so what about the family what can we do what can we do there you bring up a very difficult circumstance uh the family has been under attack for decades and it shows you're talking about crime that's the problem you're talking about schools that's the problem you talk on and on and on the government has been successful in destroying family um, that is the, then you mentioned incentives. All this is mostly financial. And where does that come from? It comes from the federal government regulations and laws out there that foster people living separately. It does not foster marriage. It does not foster families. Uh, so where's the bill to come in and change all that? It won't be one single bill, Captain. Uh, this is something that we have developed over three generations of time, and we've come accustomed to it. Right now, right now, and we talk about judges like we were a minute ago, uh, someone can come in if they're a married couple or even if they're not married couple. Someone can walk into the court or to the, court, the sheriff's office, make a complaint, valid, invalid, it doesn't matter. They make the complaint. That goes immediate to the judge, the judge without a hearing, without evidence other than the statement, and then says, okay, you stay gone. He can throw one member out of the house and just keep them gone as long as he chooses to. That's discretion, and that's overused. Um, I I'm, I'm personally know of a circumstance um, where is this at? Is it in? No, it's not in Montgomery. It's in a, one of the rural areas where uh, uh, one has made the complaint. He gets put arrested, pulled off his job, uh, given bond. He goes back to his job four days later, uh, if he still has it. And then immediately after he gets out, she goes and makes a new complaint. It's over and over and over again. And we wonder why our courts are crowded the domestic issues that we have that come through the courts is eating up all of our resources and our time, and we're not dealing with it appropriately. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, and I, I do, I understand that it's a, very, I tackle, uh, because I mean, I, I personally been told uh, by, by some uh, local politicians here, we're not we're not in the business of of keeping families together. We we're not, we don't pay families to get together, and we you know that's not you know that's that's a that's outside of our purview. But I, you know, like I like I told them, and I just you know I mentioned it to you. Like the government has no issue purview. offering incentives for families to be separate. Um, that's so likewise, you, it seems that there will be uh -huh. something some kind of way where whether it be. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, pro no, no, no property tax for a married household. No, you know, you don't have to keep paying for your driver license or 
some kind of there's some kind of ways that you can alleviate it where people are more apt to come together and put their you know resources together as a family and it just it would just benefit sure. all of us so much um we have some things we have some things like that in existence you know the homestead exemption was uh, on property taxes was designed for families that's what it was basically designed for but when you come into government and you have um, an issue of uh, a benefit of some type, well, each person can get a benefit, all right? That benefit is a particular amount. But if you're th- to those two people get married, guess what? That benef- Those benefits decline. Talk about a disincentive, and that de- decline is more than their driver's license cost or, the, or many s- several taxes added together. We are destroying the family by financial incentives. Gotcha. Yes, sir. What um do do you in your role? Do you have any any say so in the way that a jurisdiction taxes their citizens? So, for example, I mean, at the city level, county level, is there any say so on your end about how much a, a, a city or county can tax their citizens? Not on a city, not not really, not a lot. OK, uh, that that uh, the cities are pretty independent. That way. The counties, in most instances, yes, we control that in, in various ways. Not very well, I might add. But there any time the county wants to do any time of tax, it has to come through the legislature. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, whether that's a tax increase or a tax cut, we have not that I've seen many of the others, but uh, that. That is controlled by the legislature, at least in symbol. Uh, yes, there is some control. Okay. Um, and the counties, the counties get very angry about that too, because they're treated differently than their cities. And hence, you find this: the counties not able to do things, but the cities can do things. And uh, hence, that that creates a disparity. But it's part of where we are now. Yes, sir. Um, the the area that you cover, your your constituents, you guys have some of the best high schools in the state of Alabama. How is it that down your way you guys have created that 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 uh, that standard and lived up to it year after year after year to have some of the best high schools in Alabama? What are you guys doing differently? Interesting question, because right next to those that are doing very, very well, the next school uh, district over is doing very, very, very poorly. Uh, we are a dichotomy here. Uh, uh, you can, uh, I'll use two examples, Sarah Land School District and Chickasaw School District. Uh, talk about a comparison of, of, of um, contrasting each other in the same area, close, I mean, contiguous. And um, it's night and day as far as resources and performances. <clears throat> I don't know precisely. If I knew, I'd be a millionaire at this point. But I don't know why and how. I do know this. Families are a key part of it. Economic development is a key part of that. Performance in schools and discipline in schools is a part of it. And how do you get those primary things together in one place is difficult. Um, but, and while we do have many good schools down here, we have our share of difficulties also. Right, right, right. I, I, I can understand that. And because to me, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. How much does the politics play in the whether a school system does well or fails uh, loads 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 politics are uh, uh i'll show i'll tell you this we have a school district uh, in, in my district that uh hired a new school superintendent uh and within two years she was able to bring that whole school district the whole school district um was significant the best improvements that the state has ever had that the state has seen improved throughout the state in one rural uh, district. And you know what the reaction was? 
She was fired. Politics, she was fired. She was fired. Politics play a huge role in our school districts, in our school classrooms. Absolutely. We we uh <laughs> Hard we see to that here. You know, I don't know uh, how familiar you are with uh, Montgomery. Uh, More than you know. Uh, or Montgomery school system. I said earlier, yeah. you know, I, I was raised here uh, in MPS and I graduated uh, from Brew Tech High School. And I've I've literally watched the school system has always been it's, it's been it's been pretty bad since I was a kid. But when when I left high school, I remember where certain high schools were were ranked when I left versus where they are now, and it's it's just we continue to go the wrong way when it comes to the education, and um, you know I, I I wish that people would would look at other districts like you mentioned where you have a. a uh, and, and which one was the the good one? Is, is Sarah Land the, the 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 district that's in better shape? Uh, Sarah Land is one of the better ones. Yes, it is. And there's and that's not the only okay. one. Several yeah, and, 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 okay. and Chickasaw is probably not uh, not the to that level. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, Chickasaw, so, Chickasaw is smaller, no, lesser uh, lesser economics, uh, and lots of other issues. Yes. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I just I wish that, you know, uh, a school system like MPS would look at other systems and just look at what they're doing. You know, correctly, because th we all all these school systems answer to the same, you know, authority. Um, and, and that authority is the, the, the federal <laughs> system, like the feds, you know, basically run the school so and and even if they don't look at the feds look at the state the state has its own parameters so if if one school district is operating within the parameters of the state and they're succeeding you know i wish that these other school districts would look at them and see what they're doing the right way and let's mimic that but i, I don't know maybe it's just that's that's too crazy of an idea um <laughs> <laughs> what uh, uh what do you Common what sense. do you think about Common sense has very little room in politics, okay? Yeah, yeah. What what do you think about the whole the, the, this this agenda to you know to to change basic biology where you got males dressing up pretending to be females and and going into a female space and basically taking over whether it be sports, whether it be a beauty pageant or whatever, like, is, is that something that you see as an issue? And do, do you see that creeping into the state of Alabama? Uh, it's not creeping in. It's here. It has been here. Um, um, I, I, I think you've said it well, Captain. I think there is a biological matter here that's been ignored. Uh, and and it is that has gained political clout. And how do you deal with that, with the politics and with the infrastructure, um, dealing with the, um, the the federal system that comes down and forces things on us? Um, what did we, how did we talk about this a few minutes ago? It seems like government um, isn't doing a very good job in building up families. Um, That's right. Uh, anyway, I there's not a lot that I can say that has not already been said and it'll fall on deaf ears like everything else. But I think we're on a, a, a very incorrect track here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just telling when you see any society that just can't get the basic, right. If you can't get the basic, right. It's, it's like, man, like, I think that's why we see the more complex issues kind of falling by the wayside because we're not getting the basic right. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, 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 we're, we're not putting our, our children in a place of success, in position for success. We put them in, put them in. 
I've lost you there, Captain. And you know what? I'm running out of time, too. All righty, sir. Well, um, uh, is, I, I so, so uh, I give you the floor. Uh, is there any final words, final thoughts that you would like to say? Well, yeah, since you got me on here on this forum, I'll say vote for me on March 5th for District 2 in Montgomery and every place else. Uh, uh, look, I've got the experience level. I know how to do things. I know how these things occur. Um, I've helped Montgomery in many ways uh, and will continue to help Montgomery and every other county that's within the district. Uh, I've done this, those places where I represent, I've been able to bring in uh, a lot of economic development in those areas and I will continue to do so. I just need a greater forum with which to work. Hence, that's why I'm running for Congress um, and leaving the state to accomplish more. All right. All right. I appreciate you uh, being here.